Pro-life Americans are praising a decision by the State Department to remove the term reproductive rights from its annual human rights report. Senior officials are deflecting critics, saying it's not an attack on women. We went back to the, the term that's used in the U.S. statute that requires the human rights report, which is uh, coerced uh, family planning, namely coerced abortion or uh, uh, involuntary sterilization. The State Department started using the term reproductive rights six years ago during the Obama presidency. Many pro-lifers dislike the term, saying it's another way of saying destroying innocent human life in the womb. Jeannie Mancini, the president of the March for Life, joins us now with more on this. Jeannie, why is the phrase coercion in population control better than the term reproductive rights? Well, because it's accurate. There is no such thing as reproductive rights, um, and the truth of the matter is that there is coerced and forced abortion around the world. We can consider China that has a two-child policy, and if women get pregnant after having one or two children, they're forced to have abortions. There's just horrific stories coming out of that. And then, of course, there's gender side in different Asian countries around the world, and sometimes even here in the United States. Uh, abort abortions happen just simply because uh, a baby is a girl, because of her gender, or in some cases because it's a boy. And, um, and, and that happens in a coerced fashion in, in certain countries around the world. And so that's the real human rights abuse. So then why do you think it was so important that the State Department remove this language, reproductive rights, this term, from the annual human rights report? Well, the question is, why was it ever even in there to begin with? Because it's not an international human right. Consider the fact that many of these countries being looked at in this report have abortion illegal in their countries, and there's never been an international treaty that I'm aware of that includes abortion um, and access to abortion as a human right. Uh, really, abortion is a human rights abuse, if we're going to get right down to it. But So it's very important that the State Department is taking this out, because it's really only been under the, uh, the pressure, really, of the abortion lobby that other administrations have included that language erroneously. Now, Amnesty International Human Rights Group says this new language devalues women's rights. How do you respond to them and to the other critics? You know, it's really sad. Amnesty has got some, some great things that they're for, but abortion is not good for women, and abortion hurts women both physiologically and psychologically. I love the phrase from Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta, abortion is profoundly anti-women. All of the mothers and half of the, the children are victims to it, and they're all, they're, all of the mothers and half of the babies are women. And uh, the truth of the matter is that it couldn't be further, you know, further from what Amnesty International is saying. Uh, uh, being pro-life is, is pro-woman. And I think that, um, unfortunately, Amnesty International, too, has really caved to the pressure of the abortion lobby and, in doing so, is doing a profound disservice to women around the world. Well, it's so nice to hear from you and other pro-lifers who continue to push so it's on this important issue so much, and obviously your response to the State Department's changing in their language as well. Jeannie Mancini, president of the March for Life, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks for having me.